Good day everyone. My name is Meros Angeli M. Peñaflor from SDO Camarini Sur. First of all, I would like to thank APA Educators Training Institute headed by Ma'am Raquel Bernabe for giving me an opportunity or for including me as one of the speakers in their 8 wave free webinar so my I'm here to discuss with you the revised rules of procedure of the Department of Education in administrative cases this is from deped order number 49 series of 2006 okay to begin with let us first discuss the legal basis Administrative discipline had its genesis from the constitutional mandate which states as Public office is a public trust Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people Serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency Act with patriotism and justice and lead modest lives This is from article 11 of accountability of public officers so therefore the phrase public office is a public trust refers to the representative government the officers being mere agents and not rulers of the people one where no man or set of men has a propriety or contractual right to an office but where every officer accepts office pursuant to the provisions of law and holds the office as a trust for the people. Okay, what are the different characteristics of administrative offenses? So, administrative offenses do not prescribe, meaning, wala siyang prescriptive period, unlike any other law the criminal law or the civil law meron ito mga prescriptive period in administrative offenses wala itong prescription it does not prescribe second administrative cases are not subject to settlement hindi pwedeng ang complainant and ang respondent mag-uusap na lang sila para mawala yung administrative case filed against the respondent. Another is, the withdrawal of the complainant is not a ground for the dismissal of the case. So, kung dumating yung point na ayaw na ng complainant na ituloy yung kaso, hindi pwedeng i-dismiss na lang basta ang isang administrative case. And the last one, the complainant is a mere witness to the commission of the offense. Therefore, anybody can file an administrative complaint. So, investigation and adjudication administrative complaints against appointed local officials and employers as well as their suspension and removal shall be in accordance with the civil service law and rules and other pertinent laws. The results of such administrative investigation shall be reported to the Civil Service Commission. Therefore, no officer or employee of the government can be disciplined or removed from office except cause and after due process. Any violation hereof proven in a proper administrative proceeding shall be sufficient cause for removal or dismissal of a public official or employee even if no criminal prosecution instituted against him okay let's proceed now the jurisdiction what is jurisdiction jurisdiction refers to the authority to hear and decide cases the power of jurisdiction to institute disciplinary actions in administrative cases is lodged only on the disciplinary authority to which such power is vested by law. Kung wala yung authority na yun, 
Absent such legal basis, the power to discipline cannot be exercised. Okay, who are the disciplining authority? The disciplining authority refers to the person, tribunal, or body duly authorized to act upon administrative cases brought before it. The disciplining authority of the DepEd is limited only to administrative cases filed against employees of the department. Heads of agencies have jurisdiction to investigate and discipline their own officials and employees, however, heads of agencies may delegate the power to investigate to their subordinates and just wait the recommendations which will be made afterwards. The authority that decides the case, therefore, is also clothed with the power to investigate and is deemed to have done the same even if in reality somebody else conducted it by virtue of delegation. So the Secretary of Education has is the disciplining authority over presidential appointees and employees in the central office. The regional director is the disciplining authority over teachers and non-teaching personnel in the regional office. And the school's division superintendent is the disciplining authority over non-teaching personnel in the school division. Okay. What if ang respondent is a principal who is the disciplining authority over a school principal according to law principals are also considered as teachers therefore the regional director is the disciplining authority for the principals okay Permanency of jurisdiction. Jurisdictions once present is not lost upon the instant of the parties but continues until the case is terminated. In administrative cases, jurisdiction over the person complained of remains even if he resigned from the service, so long as the offense was committed during his incumbency. Therefore, a public official's resignation does not render moot an administrative case that was filed prior to the official's resignation. The jurisdiction of the court at the time the filing of the administrative complaint was not lost by the mere fact that the respondent public official has ceased in office during the pendency of his case. This is true in Andotan v. Ombudsman. GR number 164679 Another, resignation is not a way out to evade administrative liability when facing administrative sanction. The resignation of a public servant does not preclude the finding of any administrative liability to which he or she shall still be answerable. The Omnibus Election Code in considering an appointed official, ipso facto resigned, merely provides for the immediate implementation of the penalty for the prohibited act of engaging in partisan political activity. This provision was not intended and should not be used as a defense against administrative cases for acts committed during government service. To continue, cessation from office of respondent by resignation or retirement neither warrants the dismissal of the administrative complaint filed against him while he was still in the service, nor does it render said administrative case smooth and academic. Okay. Administrative cases initiated motu proprio by the secretary, the regional director, or the school's division superintendent. What does motu proprio mean? A motu proprio case is one where the secretary of education, the RD or the SDS, files on his own authority a complaint or a charge 
against an evening employee either on the basis of anonymous complaint or upon verifiable evidence which he believes a subordinate should be made accountable of so this administrative case will start from fact-finding investigation ordered by the disciplining authority next is the filing of the formal charts then formal investigation will commence then the crafting of the decision what about administrative case initiated by any other person an administrative complaint may also arise upon the filing of a valid complaint by any person. This is sometimes called an ordinary complaint to distinguish it from a motu proprio complaint. Both kinds of complaints are valid. In the case of motu proprio complaint, however, the same need not be under oath and does not need a certification of non-forum shopping. This is because it is the disciplining authority himself who is the complainant. So, in an ordinary administrative case filed by any other person, it will start with the sworn complaint, followed by preliminary investigation, which require a respondent to submit a counter affidavit, then a formal charge, and the formal investigation will commence, then the crafting of the decision. Okay. Ano ba yung content ng complaint? As to form, it should be under oath, clear, simple, and concise. And it should contain the nature and cause of action. The content, it should state the full name of the complainant, the name and address of the person complained of or the respondent, the position of the Department of Education, the relevant and material facts, including the certified true copies of documentary evidence and affidavits, and the certification of non-forum shopping. So the complaint is required to contain a narration of the relevant and the material facts which should show the acts or omissions allegedly committed by the person being complained of. What does certification of non-forum shopping mean? Forum shopping is committed by a party who avails of several administrative or judicial remedies in different courts or offices, simultaneously or successively, all of which are substantially based on the same essential facts and circumstances. Okay, actions in the complaint. There are only two actions which can be given by the disciplining authority be it the secretary of education the regional director or the school's division superintendent the disciplining authority will dismiss the case if there is no merit truth or merit in the allegations in the complaint in the same manner it will give due course if the complaint is sufficient in form and substance okay fact-finding investigation or preliminary investigation ano ba yung flow ng fact-finding investigation the disciplining authority shall appoint and designate investigators who shall within five days upon receipt of such appointment commence the investigation so dapat yung mga investigator mayroon silang appointment pero si para they are bonded by law or they are cloth with an authority to conduct investigation. Then after this, the investigator shall require the person complained of to submit a comment or affidavit within three days from the set of said order. The investigator may summon parties to a conference to propound clarificatory questions and or interview any possible witnesses. Then, after which, the investigators will make an ex parte examination of the records and documents submitted by both parties and other documents readily available from other government offices. The, sub the investigator will submit investigation report containing their findings and recommendations. 
If a prima facie case is established, a formal charge shall be issued by the disciplining authority. On the other hand, if no prima facie case is established, the complaint is dismissed. Okay, how about the formal investigation? Kailan nagkakaroon ng formal investigation? Kung magkaroon ng formal charge, it's either we magkaroon din ng preventive suspension kung kinakailangan, then the respondent sh shall submit an answer. It should be in writing and under oath, shall be specific, and shall contain material facts and applicable laws. Failure or refusal to file an answer within five days from receipt of the formal charge constitute a waiver thereto. Nakakaroon ng waiver. Sa part ng respondent or a person being complained of kung hindi siya magsasubmit ng answer to the complaint. Then, formal investigation will commence. It should be held not earlier than 5 days, not later than 10 days from receipt of the order of the disciplining authority. After which, pre-hearing conference. After the pre-hearing conference, there would be a submission of formal investigation report to the disciplining authority. Then, the disciplining authority will make a decision. Okay. Preventive suspension. Kailan nagkakaroon ng preventive suspension? What are the different grounds? First ground is dishonesty. Then, oppression. Then, grave misconduct. Neglect and the performance of duty. Then, if there are reasons to believe that the respondent is guilty of charges which would warrant his removal from the service. Ano yung reasons? Reason is to tempor temporarily remove the respondent from the scene of his misfeasance or malfeasance and to preclude the possibility of exerting undue influence or pressure on the witness against him or tampering the documentary evidence on his file with his office. Okay, substitute. In lieu of preventive suspension, the disciplining authority or head of office may reassign respondent to other units of the agency during the formal hearings. Okay, what is the duration of the preventive suspension? It should not be exceed 90 days if the case is not yet finally disposed of, the employee should be reinstated. So, after 90 days, kahit hindi patapos yung investigation, yung respondent should be reinstated to his former office. Okay, what is the remedy for the order of suspension? The respondent may file a motion for reconsideration or MR or appeal the same to the Civil Service Commission within 15 days from the receipt of the order of the suspension. Okay, the composition of the formal investigating committee. ASDS, SDS, ARD, RD, ASEC, or USEC. The secretary or his her duly authorized representative who must have equal rank to or higher than the rank of the respondent as chairman. The duly authorized representative of the Philippine Public School Teachers Association or the PPSDA as member. And any officer of the Department of Education with a rank equal to or higher than the rank of the respondent as member. Okay. Employee of the central office, the secretary shall have full discretion on the composition of the formal investigating committee when the respondent or a person being complained of is an employee of the central office. On the teaching personnel, the SDS or his or her duly authorized representative who must have at least have the rank of a division supervisor where the teacher belongs as chairman, a representative of the local or in the absence any existing provincial or national teachers organization and a supervisor of the division, the last two to be designated by the disciplining authority. Okay. Non-teaching personnel in the region and division offices. The disciplining authority shall have the full discretion on the composition of the, of the formal investigating committee 
when the respondent or person being complained of is a non-teaching personnel in the region and division offices. Okay, formal investigation report. Within 15 days after the conclusion of the formal investigation, a report containing a narration of the material facts established during the investigation, the findings in the evidence supporting said findings as well as recommendations shall be submitted by the committee with the disciplining authority. The complete records of the case shall be attached to the report investigation. The complete record shall be systematically and chronologically arranged, paged, and securely bound to prevent loss. There should be a table of contents, and whoever is in charge or the, of the transmittal of the complete record should be held responsible for any loss or suppression of pages thereof. The, the formal investigation report shall not be given to the parties and shall serve only as a guide to the disciplining authority who may or may not adopt the same entirely or partially. Okay, offenses and penalties. Administrative offenses with corresponding penalties are classified into grave, less grave, or light, depending on their gravity and effects on the government service. Okay, grave offenses are those which may be punished with dismissal from the service for the first offense or the maximum of one year suspension for the first offense and dismissal from the service for the second offense. Ano yung mga grave offenses? Okay, let's proceed. One of which is serious dishonesty, gross neglect of duty, grave misconduct, Notoriously undesirable, conviction of a crime involving moral torpitude, falsification of official document, physical or mental incapacity, engaging in partisan political activities, receiving for personal use of a fee, gift, or other valuable thing, constructing loans of money or other property from persons with whom the office of the employee has business relations, also includes soliciting or accepting anything of monetary value, nepotism, disloyalty to the Philippines and to its people, oppression, disgraceful and immoral conduct, inefficiency and incompetence, frequent un unauthorized absences or tardiness, refusal to perform official duty, gross insubordination, conduct prejudicial to the best interests of the service, directly or indirectly having financial and material interest in any transaction requiring the approval of his office, then owning, controlling, managing, or accepting employment as officer among others in any private enterprise regulated, supervised, or licensed by his office unless expressly allowed by the law. Okay, another is disclosing or misusing confidential or classified information, obtaining or using any statement filed under the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for public officials and employees, and finally, recommending any person to any position in a private enterprise which has a regular or pending official transaction with his office. So those are the grave offenses under the administrative case or, or administrative law in the Department of Education. Next, we have the less grave offenses, punishable with one month and one day to six months for the first offense and dismissal for the second offense. Okay, offenses which is considered as less grave. We have simple neglect of duty, simple misconduct, gross discourtesy, violation of civil service law, insubordination, habitual drunkenness, unfair discrimination, in rendering public service due to party preference or affiliation, failure to file. Sal N 
and disclosure of business interests and financial connections, and conflict of interest between private business enterprise and public office. Okay, light offenses naman are those punishable with reprimand for the first offense, suspension of up to 30 days for the second offense, and dismissal from the service for the third offense. Okay. Light offenses are the following discourtesy, improper or unauthorized solicitation of a contributions from subordinate employees, violation of reasonable office rules and regulations, habitual tardiness, gambling, refusal to render overtime service, disgraceful, immoral, or dishonest conduct prior to entering the service, borrowing money by superior officers from subordinates, lending money at a serious rate of interest, willful failure to pay just debts or to pay taxes, lobbying for personal interest or gain, promoting the sale of tickets in behalf of private enterprises that are not intended for charitable or public welfare, welfare purpose, failure to act promptly on letters and requests within 15 days, then failure to process and complete action and documents and papers within a reasonable time from preparation thereof. So, madami-dami. Also, failure to attend to anyone who wants to avail himself of the services of the office, engaging in private practice of his profession. So, there should be a permit here. If you want to engage in private practice, and last one, pursuit of private business, vocation, and or profession. Okay, the decision of the disciplining authority shall be in writing and shall state clearly and distinctly the facts and the law on which it is based. The disciplining authority shall render his decision the case within 30 days from receipt, from receipt of the report of the investigation. Okay, administrative liabilities. The penalties for light, less grave, and grave offenses are as follows. For light offenses, those I mentioned a while ago, first offense is reprimand. Second offense, fine or suspension not exceeding 30 days. And the third offense is dismissal. For less grave offenses, first offense is fine or suspension of not less than 30 days and not exceeding 6 months. Second offense is dismissal. For the grave offense, dismissal only so if the respondent is found guilty of two or more charges or counts the penalty to be imposed should be that corresponding to that most serious charge or count and the rest shall be considered as aggravating circumstances so say for example a person being complained of or a respondent is guilty of less grave offenses and a grave offenses Yung penalty ng grave offenses ang consider ng disciplining authority. So, anong mangyayari doon sa less grave offenses na nagawa niya? That would be considered as aggravating circumstances. Okay, let's continue. So, the decision of the secretary in administrative cases... If it is against presidential appointees, subject, subject to confirmation, modification, or disapproval by the president. So, there would be a final order or resolution of the president subject to MR or to an appeal to the Court of Appeals. If it is against a non-presidential appointees, if the penalty of suspension is not more than 30 days or a fine not, not exceeding 30 days salary, shall be it shall be final and executory 
if the penalty exceeds 30 days of suspension or fine exceeding 30 days salary shall be final and executory upon the lapse of the period for filing of motion for reconsideration or an appeal to the civil service commission okay so those are the differences of the two so the decision of the regional director in administrative cases if the penalty is removal it it is subject to confirmation or modification or disapproval by the secretary of education if the decision is confirmed modified or disapproved shall be subject to a motion for reconsideration to the secretary of education or an appeal to the civil service commission now if the penalty is suspension a decision rendered by the regional director whereby the penalty of suspension for not more than 30 days or a fine in an amount not exceeding 30 days salary imposed the penalty shall be final and executory on the other hand if the penalty imposed suspension exceeding 30 days or a fine in amount exceeding 30 days salary the same shall be final and executory after the lapse of 15 day period for filing a motion for reconsideration or an appeal and no such pleading has been filed okay what is the period uh, for a motion for reconsideration the party adversely affected by the decision may file a motion for reconsideration with the disciplining authority who render the same within 50 days from the seat thereof then ano ba yung grounds to, in order for the motion for reconsideration to be considered there is new evidence discovered which materially affects the decision rendered or the decision is not supported by the evidence on record or there is an errors of law or irregularities committed prejudicial to the interest of the movement what is the effect of filing of an NR? The filing of MR within the reglementary period of 15 days from the seat of the decision shall stay the execution of the decision sought to be reconsidered. Okay, appeal. The decision of the regional director imposing a penalty exceeding 30 days suspension or fine exceeding 30 days salary appeal to the secretary within 15 days from the set of the decision the decision of the secretary may be appealed to the civil service commission pending appeal the same shall be executory now what are the exceptions of the two where the penalty is removal the same shall be executory only after confirmation by the secretary of the department of education okay appeal is being obtained by a movement to obtain a reversal or modification of judgment on the merits by elevating the case to a higher office okay what is the party adversely affected doctrine it refers to the rule that, an in, in, that in administrative cases, only the respondent who was found guilty of an offense has the personality to file an appeal. This is true in Paredes v. Civil Service Commission case. However, this is procedural rule which must be invoked by the appealee. Otherwise, the appeal by the complainant may be given due course. The Civil Service Commission allowed to appeal in cases where the respondent is exonerated of charges. The court did not deviate from the doctrine that the complainant being a mere witness for the government cannot appeal the decision rendered in the administrative case. No private interest is involved in administrative case as the offense is committed against the government. In National Power Corporation versus Civil Service Commission and Tan Felix, the National Power Corporation had previously filed an administrative complaint against one of its employees, Rodrigo Tan Felix, resulting in his dismissal from service. When the Civil Service Commission exonerated Tan Felix and the Court of Appeals affirmed his exoneration, 
the National Power Corporation was allowed to file an appeal. This is true with the LRTA versus Salvania case, GR number 192074. Okay, pursuant to Rule 43 of the Rules of Court, the decision of the Civil Service Commission are appealable to the Court of Appeals through a petition for review. So, mag apply din dito yung Rule 43 ng Rules of Court. So, yung decision ng Civil Service Commission can be appealed to Court of Appeals through a petition for review. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, APA Educators Training Institute, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I hope to see you again for the next free webinar of the organization. Thank you to, you did, to the team, especially to the head or to the CEO, Mom Raquel Bernabe. Um, I hope I will be given another opportunity to be one of the resource speakers in the series of seminars that the organization will be sponsored with. So, Chos Mabalos, hanggang sa muli.